graphing a radical of a given radical. Um, given this graph, state the domain of the square root of it. So we know that the square root of the positive numbers works, the square root of zero number, that works, and the square root of negative doesn't work. So in this section, this, you can't square root. You can't square root any of that part. So this one works, and this one works, so that will be our domain. So negative infinity up to negative one. And then from one, two, three to infinity. Those sections will work. Okay, and that's all it's asking for, not to graph, but to just state the domain. Sketch, sketch the graph. Okay, so this part, remember, will not be able to square root because it's negative, so that part will be left alone. The square root of zero is zero. The square root of one is one, so those are invariant. And then this would be the square root of two, which I believe is something like 1.4-ish. 1. 1. 1. So I'm gonna go from there to there. And then I know that the square root of decimal numbers actually is higher. So that's it. Okay, next number three. Given this function, what's the domain? So this will not work to square root. This will not work to square root. So this part will work. So from negative two to two would be the domain that would work. So which one is that? That is answer B. This says x is less than or equal to two, and this says greater or equal to negative two. So in this question, um, Billy was given this graph and asked to graph the square root, and this is his answer. What was his error? Okay, so this was good, but he didn't square root that. Zero is good, one is good. Um, it's this section right there that he needs to go above. Okay, so when you're square rooting decimal numbers, they are actually higher, not equivalent to. State the domain if you're asked to graph the square root. So square roots of negatives don't work, and then the rest would. That section would and that section would. So this section is from negative two to zero. And then this is from two to infinity. And then also the range that was asked of me. So the range, the lowest height is zero. And then it will go to infinity because of that arrowhead. Number six, sketch the graph of the square root. Okay, so we know that that won't exist. So zero, the square root of zero is zero. The height of one, which is right here, that will also not move. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, so basically where the arrowhead is, I'm gonna move it straight down to two. And then this section needs to be above the curve and then below, and then an arrowhead. Determining the domain. So
so what do I know about just graphing this function? So it's a parabola and it's shifted down for. And then I would know if I factored it and the x-intercepts would be at negative 2 and positive 2. So now which part of the graph would work? Those two pieces, so from negative infinity to negative 2, I can square root. Also from 2 to infinity, I can square root. Okay, you could also do this algebraically, um, where you would want to know where is that greater or equal to 0, because that has to be 0 or positive. So if I move the 4 over, oops, if I move the 4 over, it's 4, and I square root, um, this just gets a little bit tricky because of the negative. So because when you square root, that will um, give us the two options. So that would just be a little bit trickier with the algebra. That's why I like the graphing method. Explain why the domain of this is restricted. So the reason is um, we cannot square root negative values. So in part of the graph has negative values. So we can't square root the negative values, so that's why. So this part of the graph, not going to work. If we're given this graph, sketch the graph of the square root. So we know that that part doesn't exist. And so 0 would stay. A height of 1 would stay. Let's take a height of 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So right there, and I'm going to move it down to 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. This section is the decimal section, so we need to go above that and arrow because of the arrow. Um, so I was asked to graph the radical of this graph. Her solution is given. Describe the error. Um, this invariant point should be where y equals 1. And then she did it 2. That was the error. The invariant should be right there. Given the graph, sketch the square root. So this part and this part won't exist anymore. So 0 will stay. 1 heights will stay. Now this is 1, 2, 3, 4. That top point has a height of 4. So the square root of 4 will move to 2. This section decimal will now go above. Same with here and then connect like that. Sketch the square root of this graph. So this portion will not exist. Zero will stay at zero. One will stay at one. This portion of the graph will be above. And then this is a three. So I'm going to square root 3 to be about a 1.7. So I'll move to there. Okay, and then this will have an arrow because that has an arrow and same on this side. Slowly increasing.
given the point AB is on that graph, describe how you would determine the corresponding point on the square root function. So, um, if you want to just algebraically write it, that's what we would be doing or describing it in, in words. Keep A the same and square root the B value. Okay, given this function, we're going to identify a point on the square root of f of x. Okay, so I'm actually going to do this graphically. So this is a line. What do I know about that line? It is a negative 1 y-intercept. And it has a slope of 1. So up 1, over 1. Okay, so that's that. So if I was to square root this function, right, this would not exist. Um, so 1, 0, negative 1, right, it would not exist. And 3, comma 2, if would now would be on this line. But remember when I square root it, it would be 3 comma square root of 2. So that one doesn't work. Um, 1 comma 0 would stay at 1 comma 0. So that one would be the, the coordinate. Okay. Um, if you wanted to do it algebraically, you would have y equals the square root of that. So if you plug in a 0, you would get 0 comma the square root of negative 1, which doesn't work. If you plugged in a 3, you would get the square root of 3 minus 1, right? So if you plugged in, so that wouldn't work. If you plugged in a 1, you would get 1 subtract 1, which is square root of 0, which is 0, okay, and so on. Um, so Savannah was trying to graph this, and the solution was wrong. So what's wrong with the solution? So this is good, 0, 1, over, under. This is the portion where the error was made. Um, so she needed to stop the domain at x equals 2 and not continue with an arrow. Okay, there should be no arrow on that end. Sketch the graph of the square root of the function. So this part doesn't exist. We can't square root negative. Zero square rooted. One square rooted. Don't move. This part will go above the graph. And I'm going to grab another point. One, two, three, four. So the square root of four will go down to two. So this one will have an arrow because that did. Given this, state the coordinates of an invariant point when sketching the graph of the square root function. So I'm going to do this two ways. I'll do the graph and then the algebraically, algebraic way. So I know that this is a line, negative 3 is the y-coordinate, the y-intercept. I'm going to go up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2. So which coordinates don't change? The heights of 0 and the heights of 1. 
So this coordinate is 6, 0, and then this coordinate is 8, 1. So you could have had either one of those answers. Algebraically, what doesn't change where y equals 0 doesn't change? So if I make y 0, then I'm going to add 3, and then I'm going to times by 2. So therefore, that would be the coordinate that wouldn't change. Or where y would equal 1 doesn't move. So I just plug that in. So I'm going to add 3. So 4. I'm going to times by 2. So 8, comma 1 would be the other point. So graphing way, algebraic way.